something new. Oh, what up and do something new. Oh, what up and do something new. Oh, what up and do something new. Oh, fell on my lip. Oh, fell on some of it. Oh, what up and do something new. Yeah, oh, fell on my toe. I shot you, come on. Oh, what up and do something new. Yeah, money quick. to Chick Chat Live. My name is Cornelia and I have some beautiful guests in the studio with me today and we're going to be talking about emotions. On the second segment of the show today we don't have a hot topic for you guys because I have these ladies in the studio with me today and we're going to be talking about womanhood, life, career and forging your path to happiness. And I have Franny Asemata who is CEO extraordinaire of The Mustard Seed. Welcome. And I have Nollywood and international actor. <laughs> Thank you. At this one, he told me. And of course, the GM of Chocolate City Music Ooh. Group, Ivy Abiroye. <laughs> All successful ladies, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Okie doke. So you guys know that we're delving into the deep end of emotions. <laughs> and I'm going to start with, you know, you know how people say... You can't find everything in one person. I want to talk about emotions from the relationship aspect. Okay. I'm going to start with you, put you on the spot. Okay. And um, do you believe in the whole you can't find everything in one person when it comes to relationships? And do you think that's an excuse, per se, for a man's emotional withdrawal? Like when you go through, you know, something deep like a miscarriage, health, and then men aren't really there for you in the way you feel they need to be there for you. Okay. Um... I do think that you will you won't find anyone that has everything that you need 100%. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know if it's meant to work that way. I think the purpose of relationships is when two people come together, um, one person magnifies your strengths, and if the other person is looking on the other side, mm -hmm. that person magnifies your strengths. I think mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a it's a give and take it's a give and take kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't think know that everyone. I don't have everything 100%. I think that's the essence of being in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, you have to support each other. I don't know that there's any excuse per se mm -hmm. to not be emotionally available for mm -hmm. your partner. Mm -hmm. um, they are priority, or they should be mm -hmm. your priority. Um, and if you've chosen to be with someone. You care about their emotional state of mind and mm -hmm. you care about how they feel. And I don't know that you should not be there if they're going through something. I don't know that there's ever an excuse for that. And if at some point you find yourself in a situation where you're not uh, emotionally available and the person calls you out and like, I need you and not here, mm -hmm. I expect the person to fix up mm -hmm. and try to be there as much as they possibly can. Okay, so there's a difference between emotionally unavailable and emotional withdrawal because I feel like there are some times that, right. and I'm going to pass it over to you, Franny, there are some times where a guy will withdraw because he just doesn't know how to handle it. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, so if okay. you deal with, like, sometimes, like, I've had friends who have gone through, you know, difficult pregnancies and they yeah. just felt like, you know, the man doesn't know what to do. If you have mm -hmm. maybe, for instance, a premature baby mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. he can't, he just can't take that hospital environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's there, but he's not there in the way that you need him mm -hmm. to be. How can we educate and, and school men <laughs> on how they can be there for us as women? Or is this an acceptance issue? Like you were saying, I think mm -hmm. you were saying, like, we have to accept that you can't find everything, so what do you think? Yeah, I think I kind of agree with this one that mm -hmm. you can't wear, wear differently. Mm -hmm. You can't expect a man to understand what you're going through. Do you mm -hmm. understand? Even if it's not something so tragic as, mm -hmm. you know, having a miscarriage or going through emotional um, trauma mm -hmm. in a marriage or in, you know, you may have had a child mm -hmm. and you're emotionally connected to the child and the man isn't and you're complaining, yeah. why is he not? You can't expect someone else to feel mm -hmm. the way you feel about something. It's just not yeah. normal. So so are you saying that women should look for it outside? So use saying. your friends. <laughs> and, no, that's, that's what I'm asking. So how would you... I think you know, we just need to be content. Like, mm -hmm. stop looking for answers to things in other people mm -hmm. and just be happy with what you... what. Be happy in your own little bubble. That's surely this is I your find. life partner. So yes. I think that the emotional depth and the deeper connections obviously strengthens the relationship. Yeah. And I feel like when things like that happen, when it's a sudden 
you know, death. I mean, I've shared deep things with, you know, ex-boyfriends and yeah. mm. I just didn't move further in the relationships based on how they how handled. They reacted. Yeah, yeah, because right. I mean, I, I, I remember sharing something so deep and literally he was mute. And I thought, ah, okay, <laughs> well, God, this is not going to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you need to be able to say the right thing at the right time but sometimes. I, yeah. I understand where you're coming from, mm-hmm. but the question is, are you going to keep doing that until you think you find the So you feel like men will always fall? I don't feel men fail. would always, but I feel we should stop expecting certain reactions from people. And find it. It doesn't mean yourself. he's not reacting, but yeah, he's not. Yeah. He might you know, not if a man doesn't it. cry because you say something, doesn't mean he's cold. He just doesn't cry. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? So right. sometimes don't read too much into it and just take them for who they are. It There's doesn't the, mean. Yeah, I agree. There's a mm-hmm. saying that goes, what messes up the most is the picture in our head of how things are supposed oh, to, yeah. to be. Mm-hmm. Sometimes just because someone doesn't necessarily react the way you want doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that they don't, they don't care. Feel, yeah. um, those two things, you you almost know when someone doesn't care and when yeah. someone just doesn't know what to say. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's also wisdom to try to decipher what that actually is, what the difference is. I think it's actually individual, like mm-hmm. either females or males. Mm-hmm. There's some women that are more... You know, they're stronger, stronger. they're able to take hold a little bit more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're able to, you know, not necessarily wear their emotions on their face and mm-hmm. still sort of, you know, brave through things. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's the same way for men. I've actually met men that are quite emotional, emotional. Mm-hmm. and Me super too. sensitive. Mm-hmm. So I think it's, it's Ooh, I actually more... I've met. Yeah. Yeah. Well, met some. I think it's <laughs> actually more of a reflection of what you're looking for. Cool. Yeah. Um, if you're picking a life partner, you're what you're doing is that you spent time with them so you know what's important to you. And you gave a very interesting mm-hmm. example, I think. It's, mm-hmm. You know, you shared something deep with somebody mm-hmm. and he was mute and you were like, well, this is not going to work for me yeah. because I need yeah. somebody that is, you. So yeah, that is emotionally yeah. stronger Strong, yeah. and that I can share with and we can communicate. And I also think that there is something to be said about education, educating each other. Mm-hmm. A lot of times I think that... Um, we expect somebody to be a ready-made package. Yeah. And it doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. You're, you're from completely different backgrounds, mm-hmm. completely different experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some things that happen to people and change them, mm-hmm. you know, forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's about constantly talking about it. This is what I like. This is how I like to be mm-hmm. treated. Mm-hmm. You know, I would like for you to be emotionally mm-hmm. there. This is how I receive it when you're mute. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's about... Communication. Yeah. Communication. Communication. No, I see it a different important. way because I understand that, okay, fine, you can't have everybody being a ready, ready-made package. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I think that for me it's important. There's some things that I know are just going to be instinctive. Mm. And I don't want to prompt you to be emotionally there. And I'm not saying all the time. Mm-hmm. But to right. me, that prompting just takes the support out of it because I have to mm. prompt you to, you know, I mean, yeah, you have to teach, but... I think that if maybe you did it 80% of the time, right, let's right, even say 60, right, let me not be too, right. let's just say 60% of the time and there was a 40, I can balance the 40, but at the point where you are stoic mm-hmm. and void of emotion, ah, no, 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 no. Well, I think that's a reflection it's, of you. And yeah, because that's what you yeah. I need. need. Like, you know, there's one, I, mean, I need you an need emotionally exactly. strong, stable, exactly. macho, Definitely, uh, exactly. and, and, go and to then, the build a bear that, workshop that, that, and build your man. Even <laughs> even you say, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what it sounds like. Yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying because even you're saying you need that sort of mm-hmm. man, I can bet you that you might get a guy that's emotional and all that, but it has to be. He has to be emotional in a certain way that Wait, you yes, like. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. the guys that you Which meet is, and they're I'm just not that talking emotional. about like wet you know? emotions. I'm just saying that a guy that knows what to do that just isn't frazzled and standing there and just what are we going right. to do? Well, just, you know, just not getting it the, together. The you, thing I find with men is the minute you now break him, you're like, be but then he's walking out crying. No, 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 not that emotional <laughs> tears kind of No, crying. because once no, the vow no, no. breaks, you oh can't put God. it back together. He's now yeah. walking out. Okay, wait. So let's Exactly. Speaking of like, holding it together, I yeah. want to move on to, I'm going to um, move on to you. Mumpreneur, yeah. you have two kids, three kids, right? Three, yeah. Um, and you're managing being a wife, you know, business career woman yeah. and um, a mother. Yeah. How do you, and I know that, you know, you've lost your brother as well, which was, you know, sad for all of us. How do you hold the hustle through trauma? Mm. Um, you know, you sometimes they say like your brand yeah. is, <laughs> you know, your brand Just affects. Throw me another brand. <laughs> your brand is like the tone of my page when I'm yeah. going through things. Yeah. Like you just know this girl is not in the mood. Like it, you know, my social media just reflects yeah, yeah, my yeah. mood. So how do you kind of hold it? Do you allow yourself to be? No, luckily I've learned how to separate my emotions from my mm. mode of operation. Right. And I'm aware now that once you have a voice, mm-hmm. you can't let people down. Do you understand? Right, yeah. There are days when I'm broken and I'm like, you know, and it, it affects people and mm-hmm. people are like, you know what? Today, I didn't know how I did it. Mm-hmm. But 
I, I, the thing is, it you know, time is a good healer as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I can't keep going through the same emotion over and over again and yeah. letting it affect me, mm-hmm. letting it dictate how I... My kids would not, you know, they wouldn't they let get me... It. They don't understand yeah. it. Yeah, they're just like, why no, is No, the thing sad? is, they actually understand it, but they would rip me apart if I tried to. Like, they're like... Mm. My son was reminding me the other day, he's like, oh, how's uncle? Are they, you know, how's he? Where is he now? You know, they wouldn't let me even... Like, why are you crying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's been a long time now, you yeah. know. So even if I wanted mm-hmm. to wallow in my sadness, like I'm looking at my kids. So you found happiness in your kids? No, you know what? I found happiness in my kids and I realized my kids need me to be happy, happy for them yes, to function as well. My work requires me to, because I used to get up and just be angry with everyone sometimes. Mm-hmm. But then I realized that I couldn't function properly. Yeah. I had to realize that I couldn't let my emotions just constantly dictate how mm-hmm. my day was going to go. Mm-hmm. And I put it in a box and I know how to take it out of that box, box. deal with it. And But that's what it is. You can't just walk around and I used to walk around and go to airports and be crying in the middle and they're like, mm-hmm. are you the only one that has suffered? Suffer. You know? Sometimes you can be so So literally, as we Africans, we're mm-hmm. like the hardest yeah. on ourselves. So I just realized that really, am I the only one? So yeah. Okay, I be I'm going to pass it on to you. You lost your dad um, at a young age and um, it was a different time for you. How did you push through not knowing, you know, this new life, how things were going to, because he was the breadwinner, you know yes. what I mean? How things were going to be paid for, how you were going to literally live. Yeah. You know, what kind of kept you through you know, that grieving period? Um, I think it's really interesting going through grief because um, a part of you feels bad mm-hmm. that you have to let it go. You mm-hmm. almost feel like you owe it to that person mm-hmm. to hold on. Mm-hmm. And interestingly for me, my that was my biggest fear as a child, losing mm-hmm. that because he was just such a, you know, present figure um, mm-hmm. and a safety net. Mm-hmm. So I feel like when you go through something like that, it's almost like, you, you just have no choice but to just be like, okay, mm-hmm. what next? I have to move on, right? Because that's your biggest fear. Yeah. yeah. And now you're in it, so you sort of, you just have to face it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I needed to make sure that his legacy was mm-hmm. retained. Right. Mm-hmm. What would he want from me? Mm-hmm. He wouldn't want me, you know, he spent so much on my education mm-hmm. and making sure that I have the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I owe it to him and to myself, really. To do well. Um, mm-hmm. To do well. And so I just... I just kind of lived for a while. I was hard on myself because I was like, are you going to forget? Yeah. You know, like, That's you can't just forget, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So um, it was not the, the the idea of not letting him down that kind of just, like, kept you going. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it changed from, you know, um, I don't want to forget mm-hmm. or are you going to forget him to, okay, use that memory mm-hmm. and make sure that you're something so that he's always proud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting, like, when I have those profound moments in my career or, mm-hmm. like, I've reached some kind of pinnacle of doing mm-hmm. something yeah. I remember him and yeah. I'm like oh I hope you're proud like, you play different roles yeah. so you had to you had to what is it evoke different emotions mm-hmm. for different characters that you've played mm-hmm. um when you come out of that the real Adesua um how do you turn it on and turn it off like in your relationships I, I have to be with someone or I have to end up with someone that understands the nature of my job mm-hmm. I need you to give me time if I come home a little moody mm-hmm. I need you to give me a bit of time, time. because yeah. It's, it takes a lot. Most people don't understand how much emotional work it takes, it takes yeah. to get into character. And mm-hmm. then when you're done with work, to get out of character. character. You don't, if, you, if you're really into it, mm-hmm. you really put your heart, body, and soul mm-hmm. into it. And it takes a bit of time for you to come out of character. There's still characters that I've played that I really identify with till today. Mm-hmm. So are there some, um, are there, have you been in relationships where they're like, who is this? Is it, <laughs> is it this way? Hello? It's funny that you mentioned this because <laughs> even, even just in terms of friendships and stuff, my manager, when I was mm-hmm. shooting a movie called The Arbitration, mm-hmm. um, my character was... <laughs> Dara had a potty mouth. She mm-hmm. was, says exactly what she thinks. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that she sets out to be rude, but she can be. Mm-hmm. My my manager said I was a, I was a, I was a mess during that period, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even know. You and I didn't fully, even yeah, know. And that's that the worst. Were... But and I tell, oh, I'm really sorry. sorry. Like I didn't even realize that that was what it was. But I just go, I do my job, and try to do it to the best of my ability, and I just try to get out of it because mm-hmm. that's not who I really. Um, essentially or fundamentally. So if you were to speak to men and, yeah. you know, sort of advise them how they could be better partners, um, more attentive to their wives' emotional needs, because I think, I mean, we can have a general discussion, but if we were to go deep, yeah. there have been a lot of hurt and relationships that have been broken yeah. because of this emotional unavailability. As much as you say, we can't expect it in a person, it hurts women. Um, if you're not strong enough to get yourself and maybe you don't have kids to make you happy, you know, you need that one person to just feel like, okay, this person has my back. What would you say to men? Let's speak to the men now. Mm-hmm. What works for me doesn't work for the rest of you. So I mm-hmm. can't say you have to do this. But I, I wonder sometimes if the women are really 
noting what it is they, they need. Like, mm -hmm. are you saying clearly, this is what makes me work, this is what I need, this is what, what I require of you. Sometimes they're just walk, scotting It's just like Cornelia, who expects you to do it without just prompting. Sad, I just don't want to prompt you, just be. High, <laughs> and you're wondering why he doesn't get it. So of course he's oh not going to get gosh. it. So the thing is, you be clear from mm. the beginning, like you're saying, marry someone who gets you. Anyway, thank you guys for, thank you know, you. your wisdom and pearls of wisdom. We are going to move on to the next segment where I'll be interviewing these ladies about forging their path to happiness. We'll be back. Welcome back, guys. I'm going to start with you, my darling Ivy. How do you see yourself and your role in society? And um, how do you think that limits or propels you in your career, um, life, and relationship? I believe, because of my religion, I'm mm -hmm. a Christian, that um, I'm unique, that I was created for a purpose, mm -hmm. that I'm supposed to impact. Um, I'm not supposed to just exist. Mm -hmm. And that has sort of been integral to whatever it is I've done, mm -hmm. generally. And I think that um, I'm also not necessarily, I wouldn't say that I've always been the safest person. Mm -hmm. I mean, entertainment, I, mm -hmm. I've been in entertainment since I was 18, mm -hmm. and the business of it, I knew that I wanted to be in the business mm -hmm. of it. Um, so, and I knew that I wanted to succeed because of what I'd had. My father was really mm -hmm. good at what he did. Mm -hmm. And I come from a home of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so talking about business ideas, and we've always dreamed big. Mm -hmm. And because I was surrounded by that, and because of my mm -hmm. foundation in Christianity, mm -hmm. I think it just sort of propelled me. Mm -hmm. So generally, when I'm doing anything, that's the center of it. And Do you find it difficult not to be labeled by, not to believe your title, like not to identify with your titles? I don't. Anymore? You don't? I okay. don't. Um, so I, I've never worked on titles. Um, yeah. And interestingly, I sort of entered my position. It wasn't like they hired me for that role. Mm -hmm. um, it's because of what I was doing, doing that they felt that I fit into it. Mm -hmm. Until today, I'm not one of those people that feels comfortable in mm -hmm. it. Because mm -hmm. I think that makes you feel like there's nothing to achieve Jeez. or there's, mm -hmm. there's no next step. So there's step. always an upper yeah. version. Yeah, so of for me, it's always just like, it can be anyone else. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, be, be, you're in a good position now. Not necessarily that I have something to prove, but you just always need to add value. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's more about making sure that you add value. If you don't mm -hmm. add value, why do they need to keep you there? Mm -hmm. Why do you need to be in that position? Mm -hmm. Have you suffered from imposter syndrome in chasing a life of your dreams? Like, so you're this big superstar. So it's funny you <laughs> ask me that, because I have to take on different people mm -hmm. uh, in the line of job that I've chosen. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is, when I first started off, you know, when, when you're starting off in an environment that you're not too sure of, you yeah. are slightly unsure of yourself. Mm -hmm. I wish I could sit down here and tell you, yeah, I knew what I wanted to do, do and I just mm -hmm. went for it and it was great. And no, sometimes you second guess yourself. And one thing I had to tell myself was, Adiswa, you are enough. Mm -hmm. My yes. greatest power lies in the fact that I'm me mm -hmm. and nobody else is mm -hmm. like me, mm -hmm. um, which means nobody can give what I have to give. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to remember to, and I remind myself till now, I remind myself every single day, you are enough. enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, it's not about anybody you, else. What did you transition in. from? What, what did you study? Um, um, well, I studied the arts from okay. 2004, but before then I was trying to go down the medicine route because mm -hmm. um, of parents and stuff. Yeah, but this right is what career. I always wanted to do. And from the age of seven, once I watched Come Into a America, mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to do this, mm -hmm. you know, um, but it took a lot of time and it took a whole lot of courage to get into it and tell mm -hmm. my parents, hey, hello, mm -hmm. I want to act. Did you have to fight through that? So outside of you not necessarily feeling it initially, right? Um, did other people make you feel like... Oh, till, yeah. till today, there are always people that mm -hmm. are never going to think that what you do is good enough. Mm -hmm. And you, you know what? I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's very okay. I keep mm -hmm. telling people that the most important thing is what you think about, about yourself. yourself. Yeah. It is, I cannot reiterate it enough. Mm -hmm. What you think about you is singularly mm -hmm. the most important thing mm -hmm. in the whole world. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter whether someone tells you you're good or you're bad. Yeah. See, compliments and, and whatever, mm -hmm. the opposite, yeah. like, they don't matter. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think about you? Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. How do you want to do it? I, I recently posted something today, 100% uh, of shots you don't take. A hundred percent shots you don't take. Yeah. If you don't take it, if you, you don't, don't take, take a it, shot, yeah. there's there's yeah, just no yeah. there's just no point. Mm -hmm. Um so for me, I have to remember to stay true to self and remind myself that I'm not here by chance, it's mm -hmm. purpose. But this I, is something I, that's that just filled life for in me. In the process of it, I think it's mm -hmm. something that one has to remind themselves because yes. it's one of those you know how every, they say read your bible pray every day constantly. it is literally true because that constantly. thought would always come in like who do you think you i battled it i have conversations mm -hmm. with myself yeah. i tell myself susu 
Mm-hmm. It's okay. Mm-hmm. You are in a place. <laughs> And especially in your line it's of work, okay. when you get something big, yeah. like you know how you get something big and you think, ah, is this me? Or yeah. you know, can, can, can I actually it's handle it? You, you feel like a I fraud. I had this feeling yesterday, yeah. and and my manager mm-hmm. told me, she was like, you know what, you you work hard. Nothing lands on your lap. So mm-hmm. I'm not sitting down here thinking, yeah. oh gosh, I came from the London. Yeah. I'm yeah. yellow. Hello. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you have to go and you have to do get the work. Yeah. If you don't do the work, the work mm-hmm. speaks for itself. Yeah. You, once you yeah, do the work and you're doing great work and you're working really hard. The word speaks for you. the work speaks for yourself, and you find that your work goes before you. People mm-hmm. tend to know you before they even meet you meet based you. on the things mm-hmm. that you've done. Mm-hmm. So it's really imp- imperative that when God puts you in a situation that you have a spirit of excellence. Yes. Mediocrity is not an option. It's not, a, it's not um, You know, so yeah. I'm just girl. You better preach. <laughs> <laughs> now, Franny, I'm going to come over to you and speak on just piggyback on what we were saying about other people not allowing you to be this new version of you. Yeah. Mm. So expectation versus reality, two mm. very different things when you're going through the process. Yeah. And I think that friends play different roles in your life yeah. when you are trying to create different versions of you because I don't even think you have to be a version of yourself yeah. like you don't have to be one dimensional if, mm-hmm. you, if you want to do three different things then you can do three different things yes How, what role have friends played and have you dealt with like unsuccess- unsupported friends um, in you creating a new life for yourself I honestly would say I don't pay attention to stuff like that mm-hmm. like because when I make friends easy by the mm-hmm. way you know so it's kind of hard I don't pay attention to like oh is this friend going to approve of what I'm doing Doing, next to this? Because if you seek approval, you might get the opposite. And if, you know, it depends on what you are, um, Mm. on how weak your, you know, your resolve is. Mm -hmm. If you are not sure and you're seeking approval from from someone, be prepared for them to just shut you down. Yeah. And what's your plan B? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So I just find that I don't wait for someone to tell me who to be. Mm -hmm. And when you are transitioning Mm -hmm. or when you are evolving... You're quite self-aware, aren't you? (laughs) Like, everything is from self. No, but you see, the thing is, the thing is, you know, not to go back to the other issue, Mm -hmm. but I don't think I started living or becoming my true self up up until, you know, the tragedy four years ago. I don't think I discovered that I... There was more to me. You didn't Mm -hmm. internalize as much. Yeah, no. No, I did internalize, but it was just a bunch of random nonsense. Mm -hmm. But now it suddenly became, who am I? Who, what legacy do I want to leave yeah. behind? And that doesn't involve my friends. Mm-hmm. Why are my friends going to tell me who I want to be? Mm-hmm. I always knew I wanted to be this person, mm-hmm. this but foreign when you're multi-millionaire. But your nearest and dearest and they kind of just really still small matter. time you, doesn't it hurt? Where would they send me to small time? Okay, so you're not <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, when they're they climbing that ladder, like, you keep down, now you keep looking up. No, because you know what? You would have the odd... Yeah. Uh, it's just a cap, yes, <laughs> now. You know, you would have the odd... Um, backbiting and yeah. you know you don't know what reason Whispers, or where yeah. that person is coming, coming from. from you know I'm trying and you know I did used to get the you know but I'm the one that got this in school why mm. you know and I remember I have this vision board on my wall my kids achievements have covered up most of my visions yeah. but you know there's this um quotes by uh what's his name windows <laughs> Bill Gates, Gates. that says he failed in most of his um, in his classes in in school, School. but he had friends who passed everything. Now they work for him. I'm like, "Ah, that's my life. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. keep your friends around and don't listen to what they have to say, because a person Mm -hmm. that is excelling in school doesn't mean that, Mm -hmm. you know, you are failing. I know. And it's something I'm trying to teach my children. Don't come and say, oh, this person Mm -hmm. came first in class and I came last. People just want to constantly tell you who to be. And, yeah. you know, society just constantly dictates mm-hmm. where are you? Milestones, goals, mm-hmm. you know, all those things. Yeah. Yes, you need them, and but it's nobody's business. put it in your brain. And yes, you, you know, you, know you see it everywhere. I mean, I do it as well because it's supposed to. Yeah. 2017 is coming. Yeah. What are your goals? Mm-hmm. I really don't care for all those mm-hmm. things because mm-hmm. the thing is, who I am today is not who I was last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not who I was yeah. four years ago. So I don't beat myself up and I'm not going to let give someone the power to dictate yeah. who I'm about to be. So friendships don't. Mm. You'll have time for friends when you're sitting on your island I will say that (laughs) I will say that it is important for people to know that if you are a sensitive person and these friends mean a lot to you they're friends that you've been you've known since primary school some people hold on to years girl you better let them go my husband says no new friends I'm like many new friends (laughs) I like new friends I don't really necessarily you know follow that tagline no new friends I get that but I think that you must be able to let go because um, there's so many sources I draw inspiration from podcasts reading and Mm. you know I've been hearing a lot of things about look if you're not ready to pursue your goals with reckless abandon, yeah. mm-hmm. and I mean reckless abandon, yeah. meaning recession, no recession, you are moving forward. What recession? And go, right. Listen, what recession? You know what I mean? 
So friends have to enter that category of yeah. reckless. Yeah. Right. Bye. Bye. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it will hold you down and you eventually will talk yourself out of it. You won't yes. realize mm -hmm. how you're believing what they're saying. Mm -hmm. right. What are you doing? Is it not you that? Mm -hmm. is it, you know, like they jeer and those things to me can penetrate your, yeah. your, your spiritual yeah. Yeah. mind. But I, I actually think that it's also just, it's, it goes down to purpose. And yeah. I think mm -hmm. the older you get and yeah. the clearer your vision and your mm -hmm. purpose is, mm -hmm. It's not even like you're trying to be mean. Mm. I think you just find that your friends change. Yes. Yeah. You, they will remove themselves. And they should change. Yeah. I'm like sorry. you're you should because you're changing. Yeah. Changing. yeah. Yes. You're changing. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it's the, fine. The and it's not even bad. It's yeah. not even like it's not bad. Like you yeah. fought. Beat. So, yeah. yeah. It's just it's so in all fairness, I know friends who were talking about schools earlier on. Mm -hmm. I know friends who went to schools and their click is Clickish. so bad yes. and their click. Yes. As in, listen, more power to you. I love it. I love, you know, it's nice to hang with them. But I'm okay being with myself. Yeah. myself. Mm -hmm. I'm okay discovering what I'm mm -hmm. about today. Because mm -hmm. God knows I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a myriad of yeah. different emotions. Yeah. So I want to take that time to say, you know what? The last time I hung with, I make so many new friends. In fact, mm -hmm. my kids are like, make your old friends. friends yeah, my right. friends' moms don't have to be your, your friends. friends. Yeah. You know, but it is so much fun discovering new people that, do you know, I went somewhere yesterday and my business called the mustard seed and someone said oh it's been however many years when is it going to become a tree this uh, this was it's not no listen it's not no it wasn't even anything like that though, no but it wasn't even anything bad because mm -hmm. you see this is the thing mm -hmm. it wasn't I, I'm sure she I know she, she didn't, didn't mean, mean it that way bad yeah, I saw the positivity in, in what, what she, she said saying. because you have to people are supposed to encourage your growth mm -hmm. right. not keep you like ah Bound you know right. like imagine yeah. you're yeah, saying okay, is this me yeah. and somebody's like really is this you you mm -hmm. better just cancel that right. you know you yeah. want to be thinking gosh mm -hmm. your, 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 your plans are supposed to scare you mm -hmm. yeah. and when someone is like yeah. ah so how far yeah. with that yeah. plan yeah. Right. it wasn't meant negatively and mm -hmm. I took it for everything mm -hmm. it was I was like you know what I have been battling mm -hmm. should I change should I mm -hmm. move yeah. is it wrong to stop working with children but that one word just told me yeah I'm sometimes I, I agree with that because on the flip side, sometimes you have to take some of those things that are uh, said to you, maybe whether it is an insecurity that makes yes. you process it negatively, mm -hmm. yes. you have to be able to take some of those things and use it to pull the thing all yeah. the way. And one of the things yeah. for me that somebody said to me that really stuck in here was that nobody cares. Like <laughs> nobody really cares. Nobody what cares about the through? process. Yep. When Brad Pitt, no when you cares. when you don't have a movie, when is your next movie coming out now? When is your hey, next hey, I don't know how many rejections you've gone yep. through and what yep. you're going. Nobody cares. Yeah. Like, when is it? When it's a constant. It's a, truth, it's a constant cycle movie. of. When? Yes. What's yeah, next? Yeah. You are not enough. You're not yeah. doing yes. it. So why give people that power? Yeah. I'm going to come to you, you Adeswa. I'm going to ask you this particularly. What truths can you share um, in your line of, you know, adventure that makes the valleys less painful and the peaks more fun? Okay. Um, one thing I would say is that you need to learn to live in the moment. Mm. I know that we always want to think about five years down mm -hmm. the line. Or, and that's great. It's mm -hmm. great to have a plan. It's great to have purpose and have vision. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in doing that sometimes as well, we forget to appreciate where, where we are, we are now. Mm -hmm. There is so much beauty mm -hmm. in where you now. are in the now and at every single stage that mm -hmm. you find yourself. There's so much beauty. Mm -hmm. And most times I don't see my values as values. I see, see them as maybe time of reflection. Mm -hmm. I, I take a step back. I, I, I clear my head. I write stuff down. I'm like, okay, what have I learned? What am I supposed to be doing? If I am not doing anything in that period and it seems like a lonely time or whatever, mm -hmm. I believe it's there for a reason. reason. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't ever believe it. God has put me there. I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be doing something yeah. with this time. So even the down times, there, there is, is purpose for that. Yeah, and there and the down time. purpose yeah. in or, down time. Even if yeah. it's clarity of mind. Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, mm -hmm. I agree. So you need to just learn to live in the moment. Don't push stuff. Like I was talking to one of my little daughters and she was like, oh God, I'm not working. I'm not working. I need mm -hmm. to find work. I was like, you're not working. That's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. yeah. Take this time that you're not working. What what Reason else would you like to do? do. Yeah. You have to find value wherever you find yourself, no matter yeah. whether you feel like you're up or you're down or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when you find yourself at the peak and you feel like it's great, just remember that this isn't the highest height yeah. that you can attain. Mm -hmm. There's always it's great that you're more, yeah. here, but there's something else that you there's can be doing as well. More. Don't get carried away. Don't get carried, carried with the, away. away with the noise. Yep. Yeah. Um, you have to be able to see and sift through information mm -hmm. that comes your way. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to stay grounded. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the... the quickest way is down from there if you're not yep, grounded yep. you have to stay grounded all right what would you say about the process and i want to give a quote that um a lady that i follow on instagram said and uh, where is it now it says the heaviest thing in life is to carry a sack full of decaying gold hmm. 
<laughs> so how do you mm. handle the process? You know, the weight of your goals. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of push through and not be caught up in the outcome? Um, I think a lot of it is that pressure that you put on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I think pressure stifles you. Mm -hmm. I think, um, not, and pressure is different from goals mm -hmm. and vision, you know? Um, pressure is, it, it, it makes you stop looking there and mm -hmm. you're just like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not. not. Yeah. As opposed to, how do I, how do I, how do I? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that sometimes it, it also it stems from understanding who you are mm -hmm. and what you're actually supposed to be doing. Because there's some people that I feel just set goals that are not theirs. Mm. It's like, why do you have Oh, we that? are in church like, today. <laughs> like, why is that your goal? Mm. Yeah. Mm. I don't even see it. Yeah. All right? So I think that we all have individual things in mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. that... I'm going to take it to church because you just like, <laughs> your gift will make, make, make way for you. you. Yeah. I believe that very strongly. I believe that the strength of character that you have, mm -hmm. your um, natural abilities, mm -hmm. you know, those things are yeah. already hinting at what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and when you get it, you get it. Mm -hmm. And I think then it's a lot easier when you're not like, okay, I'm just carrying and piling things on. Mm -hmm. It's now easier for you to draw like a roadmap. And obviously mm -hmm. going back, you know, mm -hmm. praying about it, I believe strongly in that. Mm -hmm. um, surrounding people that, surrounding yourself oh. with people that are, can propel you in that mm -hmm. way. And yes. it's really just... Sorry to cut you off, that is so true. It's really yeah. you, what, What's that thing they say? You are the top five people. And girl, I have to look at my circle at some point. Like, yeah. No, it's actually, like, I think, no, it's, I think important. it's important. Yeah. Yeah. With, with mm -hmm. anything, like when yeah. you're making a decision in life, you need to think, okay, who are the people that are going to weigh me down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she may not be kind decaying goals, she may be carrying decaying people. Yeah. Really, yes. right? It's yeah. So it's just about the way you look. Preach, you, you, preach, <laughs> preach, preach, preach. So it's just about the way you, yes. that's, that's what so I So we think. can remix that to the heaviest thing in life is to carry a sack full of decaying people. <laughs> because it's usually the people that aren't really going for anything in life that have the yeah. most to say. I mean, I realized it. recently that I, I mean, oh, let me, let me speak in, um, generally. Mm -hmm. We don't know how much negativity we surround ourselves yes. with. Yes. So you grow up being mm -hmm. told you can't, you can't, you mm -hmm. go to school, you, you do can't. certain things. Because mm -hmm. at one time, everyone was in IT. At one time, everyone was studying nursing. How many people mm -hmm. are practicing what they study? Studied. You're a lawyer. Yeah. yeah. You wanted to study. I mean, mm -hmm. God knows I'm like, yeah. why did I waste my years? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I actually think that process is necessary. Yeah. Yes, but mm -hmm. then that's for those of you who can say you studied this and mm -hmm. still it's in what you're doing. There are many yeah. people yeah. that yeah. end up yeah. staying yeah. in uni for 9, 10, 12 years yes, and doing. they now become layabouts. And then suddenly mm -hmm. they've decided yeah. to just cut themselves off mm -hmm. of that and do their own thing. And they're thriving. But it's because you're allowing people to tell you who you should be, what you should do and tell you what your process is. So sometimes it's not you a lot of the time, people are piggybacking off of someone, someone else's, else's process, yeah. Yeah. or someone else's success. I, mm -hmm. They can do it, why can't yeah. I? Mm -hmm. But then also it's you allowing people to guide you as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I had a dream and I thought, ah, you dreamt. Mm -hmm. It's my own. <laughs> you know, so we yeah. fall victim to that a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of a lot of the time it's us conditioning our minds mm -hmm. to do better, mm -hmm. not just other people affecting mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Stop letting people dictate who you are, you are who you should definitely. be. Yeah. And you know, you will, no matter mm -hmm. what, even if God has said this is your plan, mm -hmm. you can stumble, mm -hmm. you know, you can face delay mm -hmm. or whatever. They're all tests. Mm -hmm. But the point is not to give up as yeah. well. Yeah. This is who I'm going to be and this is who I'm determined yeah. I'm going to be. Anyway, thank you ladies for joining me. Thank it's been an interesting yeah. conversation. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank and you. thanks to you guys for staying tuned. I will see you next week on Chit Chat Live.